Tofu, were you eating those cookies that mum had asked you to have only after dinner? No, dear, I wasn't. I just came in the kitchen to drink water. Tofu, do you know something? A lie is not fruitful. How, dear? Come, I have a moral to teach you today. The Boy Who Cried Wolf Once upon a time, there lived a shepherd boy who took care of the sheep in the village. He was very dedicated to his work. Every day, he used to take the herd of sheep to the top of the hill and bring them down by evening. But one day, he felt really bored. I am feeling so bored. All the villagers work together, but here I am, all alone, taking care of the sheep and no one else to talk to. What should I do? Suddenly, he had an idea, a wicked one. He went over the edge of the hill and started shouting. Help! Help! There is a wolf! He is going to eat all our sheep! Help! Hearing the boy cry out for help, all the villagers came to the top of the hill to save the sheep. But reaching there, all they could see were calm sheep grazing the grassland. You silly boy, where is the wolf? Why did you cry out for help? The villagers were very angry and left the place cursing the shepherd boy. <laughs> this was so much fun! Next day, the shepherd boy was back again to the routine of taking the sheep for grazing. And yet again, he found himself completely bored. Let's try that prank again! <laughs> the boy again went to the hilltop and started shouting. Help! Help! There is a wolf! He's gonna eat all our sheep! Help! Once again, the villagers, after hearing the boy cry out for help, ran to save the sheep. But once again came back after being fooled by the boy. This is not right. You would have to pay for this one day. With no regrets on his face, the shepherd boy went back to his sheep. One day, when he was lying under the tree while his sheep were grazing, he saw some sheep running here and there. After looking closely, he saw a wolf approaching the herd. The boy suddenly ran to the edge of the hill and started screaming for help. Help! Help! There is a wolf for real this time! He is going to eat all our sheep! Help! Please help! This time, the villagers didn't pay any heed to the boy screaming. Let's leave him. This time too he might be playing a prank on us. The boy kept on crying for help but no one turned up this time. All he could do was stand there and watch his sheep getting killed by the wolf. Oh, I should have not played that prank with the villagers. Nobody believed me when the wolf actually turned up. What should I do now? I have lost all my sheep. The shepherd boy was never trusted ever by anyone. I am sorry, Tia. I did lie about those cookies and now I learnt a lesson too. Liars are not believed 
even when they speak the truth i won't ever lie again good tofu you are a good boy You recite so many stories to me that are full of morals but you have never recited your favorite story to me which one is it <laughs> Tofu that's true I haven't yet recited my favorite story to you would you want to listen to one of my favorite story Yeah Jack and the Beanstalk Once upon a time there lived a widow with her only son named Jack. Their times were really hard and they were living in poverty for long. Jack was too young to work and earn money. All their house furniture and other belongings were sold off to carry on with their basic daily needs. Until at last they were left with a cow. who used to give milk every day and that they used to sell off in the market to buy bread one day the poor old cow didn't give any milk that's when jack suggested his mother i think we should sell off this cow and get a good return in bargain so jack left to sell off the cow in the market on the way he met a butcher Oh, where are you going, Jack? I'm going to the market to sell off this cow for a good bargain. Oh, why take the trouble to go that far? I have a very good deal for you. He took out five strange-looking beans from his pocket and handed them to Jack. Jack looked little hazed as to what kind of good bargain it is. Oh my god! They are so beautiful. What do you call these? Beans. Magical beans. If you plant them overnight, by the next morning they will grow up and reach the sky. Wow! Mother would be so happy to see them. Thank you, Mr. Butcher. And off went Jack happily to his mother and showed her the magical beans. But to his disappointment, she only got angry at him and shouted, "Off you go to bed right away." She threw the beans outside the kitchen window and into the backyard and went off to her bed crying and weeping. The next morning, when Jack woke up, he saw outside his window And to his surprise, he saw a great beanstalk reaching up to the sky. Oh my god! This beanstalk is so huge. I need to climb this up to see where it leads to. He climbed up and up and up till his home looked a mere spot on the ground. At last, the stalk ended. and Jack found himself in a completely different place but suddenly a beautiful lady appeared and said hello jack you don't know me but i know you and everything about you the castle you see there belongs to a giant who stole all your father's money and killed him Your mother had kept the secret from you to protect you. He owes you, Jack. The lady disappeared in thin air. Jack kept standing there and thinking. He surely owes me and my family. Far away, where the road ended, he could see a huge castle. He went up to the castle and knocked on the huge door. A giant woman opened the door. She looked scary and howled at Jack. What do you want? 
Uh, if you please, ma'am, would you kindly give me some breakfast? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The giant woman, though looked cruel and ugly, had a kind heart and offered Jack a huge plate of English breakfast but warned him, You must finish quickly before my giant husband comes back and eats you. Then suddenly there was a huge knock on the door and the wife picked up Jack and hid him in a huge empty kettle. As the door opened, the giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense! You're mistaken. It's the ox hide you smell. So he sat down at the table and ate the ox that his wife had served him as breakfast. After he finished, he asked his wife, Get me my money bags. He started counting his money, but he was so sleepy that he slept on the table. The whole room was roaring with his snore. Jack, taking an opportunity of this time, got out of the kettle, picked up the money bags and ran towards the door. Before the giant woke up, he climbed down the beanstalk and to his cottage and did not look back even once. He took a sigh of relief and ran to his mother. Mother, look what I got. We are rich now. The mother and the son lived quite comfortably. Till one afternoon, when his mother was away, he decided to go up to the giant's castle and see what was happening there. So he climbed up the beanstalk and reached the castle. There, standing at the door, he saw the giant's wife again. But she didn't recognize him because he was dressed impeccably this time. Uh, if you please, ma'am, he said. Will you give me some breakfast? Run away, you little boy. Last time a boy came. He stole my husband's money bags. But since she was kind-hearted, she offered Jack breakfast. At that very moment, the giant knocked on the door and quickly she hid Jack in the oven. The giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. But the giant's wife once again assured him that he is mistaken and offered him his huge breakfast to eat. After eating his food, he asked his wife, Get me my golden head. The wife got the hen and the giant roared in his voice. Lay. That very moment, the hen laid a golden egg and Jack was left amazed with what he saw. No sooner he saw the giant slipping into his deep sleep and once again he came out of the oven picked up the hen and ran for the door. In the meanwhile, the hen began to cackle. The voice made the giant move a little, but he kept sleeping. Jack climbed down the stalk and went straight to his mother and gave her the golden hen. The mother and the boy were so rich that they had money greater than even what they could spend. One day, he was sitting idle. The thought of the beanstalk crossed his mind again and he decided to climb it. No sooner he was at the castle, 
But this time he decided not to be seen and climbed the kitchen wall of the castle and hid himself in the oven. In came the giant roaring louder than ever. Fee fee fo fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I grinded his bones to make my bread. But the giantess was quite sure that she had seen no little boy that morning. And after grumbling a great deal, the giant sat down for breakfast. As soon as he got over with his breakfast, he called out to his wife. Bring me my harp! Sing! ordered the giant. Soon the harp started singing the most beautiful sounds ever heard and no sooner the giant fell off into his deep sleep. Jack, who was waiting for this moment, got out of the oven and climbed the table to grab the harp. But as soon as he started running off with it, the harp started shouting. Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to catch the sight of Jack running out of the kitchen door. With a fearful roar, he saw Jack running with the harp and dashed after him. Little Jack ran as fast as he could while holding the harp tightly in his hands. The giant, taking terribly long strides, gained on Jack and he would have been caught if Giant had not slipped over a boulder. Before he could pick himself up, Jack began to climb down the beanstalk and when the Giant arrived at the edge, he was nearly halfway to the cottage. The Giant began to climb down too, but as soon as Jack saw him coming, he called out, Mother, bring an axe! The widow hurried out with the chopper. Jack had no sooner reached the ground than he cut the beanstalk right in two. Down came the giant with a terrible crash. And that, you may be sure, was the end of him. But the mother had a very important advice for Jack. Jack! What the giant did to your father was bad. But you should not have been so greedy. He reaped what he sowed. But greed is also a bad deed. Jack agreed to his mother and promised to never be greedy again. And they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! That was such an adventurous story. Yeah, Tofu! And do you know why it was my favourite story? No? Tell me? The story was about a brave boy who wanted to fight against poverty and in a way he got a chance to take revenge of his father too. But in the process he forgot that harming the giant again and again was not ethical and stealing from the giant's house was also against his morals. Oh, that's quite a heavy thought for my little brain. Ha ha ha, let's go. We are late for dinner. Mum must be waiting. For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.